It's not a order in the order yet. Who is a noda? Yes, I can up so sushaskata. Good afternoon. It's so good to be here with you to share God's words, share this message. Let us remind one another that we do everything in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today is the Feast of Assumption, Assumption of the Holy Astvazadzin, the Holy Mother of God. Last week, if you remember, I explained what that beautiful title is all about, that Saint Mary was the one who bore God, that gave God a, a physical existence here in this world to be able to touch us in a very unique manner in the incarnation of Jesus Christ. I shared with you that very, very special story of how St. Mary said yes and how God expects us in the same manner to be able to say yes to His will, that we are the servants, the handmaidens of God. Today, I want to take it one step further because if you went to church this morning, you saw that there was a very special service in the Armenian church. It is called Grape Blessing. They brought grapes over there and they blessed these grapes. You say, what's going on? I thought we were celebrating St. Mary. Why the grapes? Well, there's a very good reason for that. So before we get into that, let's review really quickly that the Assumption Feast is one of five major feasts in the Armenian Church. And they all point to how beautifully God loves us and how important God's love is in our life how much He expects from us, and how in that expectation we have an opportunity and a responsibility to react to God's love. Now today we had the blessing of the grapes. Now let's think about those grapes. What are grapes? Well, it's one of the most tasty fruits, and it is one of the fruits that are propagated without seed. In other words, you don't need a seed to get a grape. You can plant the vines. Well, in the same way, remember, Jesus was the one who was created without human seed. He was the one who came, who was incarnate. Incarnation means took, taking form. He took form through the Holy Virgin Mary by the Holy Spirit. And he lived among us. So the grape metaphorically has that, that, um, that meaning. Now, there was a... a a very special priest in my life when I was growing up. His name was Father Asolink. He later became the bishop in Iraq. But when I met him, he had served in Australia. And I asked him, I said, Father, I said, now in Australia, the seasons are completely different. They don't have grapes in the middle of August. What did you bless? And of course, in that, those times, in those ancient times, prehistoric times, you know, there was no refrigeration. You couldn't bring grapes all year long. And he told me that he blessed apples. So it wasn't a question of just blessing the grapes, but blessing also the first fruit of the season. And in Armenia, in that very special place, if you've ever been to Armenia, you know that the grapes are so delicious over there. The grapes find their, their first fruit, their first harvest is right around today. August 15th is the date of Assumption in the West. Ours is the Sunday closest to August 15th. And on that date, they would bring their first fruit to the church. In other words, asking the priest to bless their first harvest. And so we had great blessing. We have those grapes that were brought to the church and the priest gave a very special blessing upon them. Not upon the grapes, but upon the fruits of the labor. And so many times in our church, for instance, in Glendale, if you come by, I invite people to bring not only their grapes, but to bring other items that they manufacture. When I was in San Jose, many people would bring their computer chips, would bring in different things that in Silicon Valley were very special. I know that here in Glendale, people have brought in all kinds of things that sometimes just a business card. It's the importance is to offer something to God that is your first fruit. That is something, uh, a product of your labor. Now, that's incidental because the real message comes to us from the gospel. And last week I asked you to read the gospel of St. John chapter 15. If you haven't done so, please do it today. 
because there we find why we bless specifically those grapes today. Jesus says, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine dresser. Now, if you haven't, if you haven't ever uh, seen a grapevine, it is the most beautiful of, of, of plants. It grows straight up, and from them, from the branches, come these beautiful grapes. So Jesus says, He is the vine. His Father is the vine dresser, the one who takes care of the, of the, of the vine. And He says, you are the branches. You and me, we're the branches. So what can we do? We can produce fruit. And that's what God expects from you and me, for us to produce fruit. And he says very specifically, he says that if you are connected to the vine, think about it, connected to that vine, what do we do? We get nutrition. And so our fruit is going to be good. But if, our, if we are not connected to the vine, we don't have good fruit. Our fruit will come... It, it will rot. And think about it for a moment. Have you ever seen some grapes? Get some grapes today. Go get a bunch of grapes. If you didn't go to church, get out there and get some grapes and put them in front of you. They are so beautiful. They are luscious. Some of them are so watery. They mouth water. They have this aromatic aroma. That, how do you say that? Je ne sais quoi. Aroma. And you say they're so good. But you look at the grapes and you know what? As beautiful as they are, as tasty as they are, as good as they smell, they are dead. They're finished. And you know what happens to grapes when they're dead? They dry up, they shrivel, they turn into chamich, raisins. The same way with your life. If you are connected to Christ, you can constantly give. You can constantly be fruitful in your life. But the minute you break that tie from Christ, what happens? You may look good. You may have good things. You may, ha you may be the most tastiest. People may say, oh, he is so nice and beautiful. But what? You're dead. You're spiritually, emotionally dead. And you dry up and you wither away. God doesn't want that from you and me. God wants us to be productive. He want us, wants us to be connected to the vine so that we can produce. We can produce a rich harvest all the time. And it's up to you and me to be able to say yes to God. To be able to say yes, we are connected to the vine. God is the vine dresser and Jesus Christ is that vine. If you are connected, you will produce much fruit. You will produce a great harvest. Now that is the message that comes to us today. Because St. Mary, this small, young, little girl, was one person who was connected to the will of God. And look what happened. Because of her, through her, Christ was born and an entire world was saved. Until today, the message of Christ reaches out to all corners of the world, bringing hope, bringing love, bringing faith. St. Mary said yes to Christ, yes to God. You too. Stay connected to the vine and say yes to God and you'll see that you will be fruitful in whatever you do, whatever your business may be, whatever work you do. As long as you give glory to God, God will bless you and you'll see that it'll be so fruitful. You talk to some of the greatest people who have made, quote unquote, uh, who have made it in this world. Their made it is not measured by what's in their pocket, but what's in their heart, by their capacity to love, by their ability to love. And today you have this very special opportunity. In the Armenian church, we bless grapes exactly for that reason, to connect us to the vine, to remind us that we will wither away unless we are connected to the vine. Think about it for a moment. You have that opportunity. God loves you so much that he's making you a branch. He has made you a Christian. He has ordained you to give fruit to the world. Don't give up this gift. Don't let it wither away. Don't let it turn into raisins. The grape, the most beautiful of fruits, the most tasty of fruits, is in your grasp and in your care. You have the ability to produce in whatever you do.
I wish you a very special Assumption Feast today. May it be filled with God's blessings. May God's love always shower within you. I'm so pleased that today you took the time to be with us to get this very special message because more important than the message is the blessing that comes into your homes. May God's love and blessings be with you always today and forever. I invite you to get involved in your local church where you can say yes to God's call. Get on our diocesan website. Go to, the, go to the parishes tab. Find the parish that's closest to you. Get in touch with your priest. Say, I want to say yes. I want to be connected to the vine. I want to give the fruit that is promised to me from Holy Scripture. Get on, get into Holy Scripture, John chapter 15, and read it. You want to get involved with me? I'm at epostle.net. That's Apostolic Evangelism for an Electronic and Expanding Universe. Until next week, I remind you, we do this to give glory and praise to the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.